don't shoot your eye out, kid. All right, guys, this week we're going over the Taurus 856 again. This week we'll be doing trigger pull weights. We'll be using some layout fluid. We will be sanding and polishing some of the components and sub-assemblies within this Taurus 856. We'll also be doing a spring replacement using a spring reduction kit. And we'll also be doing the headspace for this Taurus 856. All the references will be below. As always, we have our iPro on. We have a clear workspace with no ammo, and we have clear weapons that will clear multiple times. So we'll see you in a minute. All right, guys, let's go over safety and tools for the week. First, we're going to don our iPro. We're going to have them on for the remainder of while we're working. And let's go ahead and clear this weapon. We're not going over disassembly, reassembly this week. They will be linked below. I'm not going to go through all these either right now. You're going to see them individually, but when we get back, we will do a trigger pull weight and we'll be in the vise. So we'll see you in a minute. All right, guys, let's go ahead and get the trigger pull measurement from this Taurus 856. We're using the Lyman trigger pull gauge, and I'm just going to be writing our what we find here on the end. So we already know this weapon's clear. So let's go ahead and try our pull in double action first, and we'll get an average. 11 pounds. Eleven point one. And eleven point one. So we're gonna call that eleven pounds. That is our average pull weight for our double action. Now let's go ahead and do some single action. Put her into single action, check her again. That is five and a half. That is five and a half. And that was five and a half. So we'll call that five and a half as well. So that's pretty spot on. So our single action is five and a half pounds. And our double action is 11 pounds. When we get back, we're going to put some layout die on this so we can find our high points. All right, guys, here we are going to apply our layout fluid to the high points or the some of the main working areas of our pistol here. We're going to be doing parts of the frame, parts of the side plate, the hand, the cylinder stop, the hammer, and we'll be doing some of the trigger as well. So we're going to speed this up, but you'll be able to see some of what I'm doing here. All right, guys, here you're just going to see that I'm just using the dauber to go over the side plate here. Nothing special. And then next, I'm going to be working on the frame. I'm just putting it on the Q-tips itself and then rubbing it in there. And then after that, I think I'm working on the hammer here. Both sides and the sear part of the hammer. And then the cylinder stop. And then I work on the hand here, and lastly, the trigger. All right, guys, now we're just going to let this dry, and we will put it together. We'll do some cycle of operations. We will disassemble it, and then we're going to work on our high points. So we'll see you when we get back from there. All right, guys, we are back from using our layout fluid and doing our cycle of operations. So what we're looking for are the high points in here. And essentially high points are where you're getting friction within your within your cycle of operation. So might be a little hard to see. Well, actually, you can see it just fine. So you can see here on the frame here that there's a, been a lot of, from where the hammer is, there's been a lot of wear here. So we need to go ahead and settle that down. And there's also a lot of wear here in our cylinder stop area. So that's something we're going to settle down as well. Here in our side plate, you can see there's a couple spots, specifically right here and right here. This here is where our hammer is coming into play. Let's go ahead and move on to our hammer here. You can see there's a lot of wear on our hammer. So we'll take this down and then our sear itself has some work that needs to be done. 
And on this back side here, you can see where it's engaging the frame. So that'll need to be taken down. We'll probably take that down out of the frame instead of out of the hammer itself. Let's go to move on to the hand. The hand isn't too bad. We had a little bit on this back end here, but nothing on the front it looks like. So be really careful when we do that. And let's go ahead and talk about our cylinder stop. Our cylinder stop has some wear here on this left hand side and of course on the top. Our right hand side isn't too bad, but we will go ahead and make sure we round this down a little bit. And lastly, we're going to our trigger here. We have some as you can see here, some parts where the frame is coming into contact. We're not going to touch the trigger itself. We're just going to work on the frame and go ahead and take those spots down. So when we come back after this, we're we're not going to do a whole full video on sanding and polishing, but we will talk about some of the techniques. All right, guys, as you can see, I put a little bit of oil on my sanding stick here. and. I'm going to start working on this high point here and importantly how I was taught to do it is you want to go in a circular motion. It's just like sharpening an axe or a knife. You're going in a circular motion and then you're going to go in the opposite way. I'm using a 600 grit here so it's not too powerful. I am not using the needlepoint files because I think they are too much for what I need right now. Later on I'll use a smaller grit and then eventually I will move on to the ceramics here. To show you real quick how I'm using this ceramic file here, I'm using it in the same way that I'm using the other files and other sanders. We're going in a circular motion. We want to make sure we have oil on here. If you get dry out, just put a little dab of oil. You can see we're just going in a, a circular, small circular motion. We're not taking too much off or being real gentle with it. Once I finish this frame up, I'm going to work on the other components and we will put this bad boy back together and we will do some weights again and then we will work on switching out our springs. All right, guys, here is our polish weapon. I ended up doing two runs. I mostly stuck to the 800 just because I thought 600 was too much. And of course, we used our ceramic files. As I mentioned before, I was mostly going to do this hammer area up here and the trigger area down here. And then I did some light work on the hand here. There is a little spot here took down. And a small part on the hammer itself here and on the top side of the other side of the hammer. I did do, ended up doing a little bit of light work on the trigger just because I couldn't get in there uh, to certain spots. And then on the cylinder stop here, I took some of the side and the top off, of course. And then lastly, I took quite a bit here off of the side plate and quite a bit here off the side plate. And down here, there was a lot of, a lot of stuff going on. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to blue these. We're gonna put them back together and we will get a trigger weight all right guys let's go ahead and get our trigger pull weight we have our put it back together we have our sanded down and we have our re-blued so let's get our weights here that was 10.9 that was 11.1 and that was 10.9 so we're just going to call that 11. And we were at 11.1 .1 before, so not much change on the double action. Okay, now let's try single action. We are reading five and a quarter. Reading five and a quarter. And that is five and a quarter, so we'll call that five and a quarter. And we were at five and a half before, so we've dropped it down a quarter of a pound. Next, we are going to change our springs, and we'll see you in a minute. All right, so let's go ahead and change the main spring. But let's be clear about something real quick. For something like this, you really need to have your iPro on, especially when you get my age, and it's the only thing that works still. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to push our mainspring plate down. And we're going to make sure we hold this, pull our paper clip out. And we're going to take our plate off, and put it right there. And now we have our mainspring and we have our hammer strut. All right, as you can see, we have them separated. So what I'm going to do is we have our new spring. I'm going to put our hammer strut into the block here just so we can make sure we get pressure when we're pushing down on our mainspring plate. And then once I have her down, I'm going to put our paper clip back in. Okay, and we are set with our new spring. All right, same with our trigger spring here. We are going to go ahead and take this block off here and our paper clip out. So we're going to push down. We have some tension, so make sure you're watching it. All right, now we are separated. I'm going to go ahead and wipe her down. And we're going to go ahead and reassemble with this new spring. Go ahead and put this new spring on. We'll push her down here in our block here. All right, and we have our new spring. All right, so let's go ahead and put in the trigger spring assembly really quick. We have our trigger spring assembly in. Let's go ahead and put our main spring assembly in. All right, and she's set. So after this, we'll go ahead and get another trigger pull weight and we'll see what she's reading. All right, let's go ahead and do our final pull weights. Do double action first and we'll do single action next. Nine. Nine. That's about 9.1. So we'll call that nine. And let's do single action. Three and a quarter. Three. And three and a quarter. So yeah, we'll call that three and a quarter, 3.15. Okay, so we went from 11.1 pounds in double action to nine pounds in double action and five and a half pounds in single action to about 3.15 pounds in single action. Last we're gonna go through headspace. What we're going to do is we're going to try our go and our no go. I'm not going to make you go through all of it with me, every single chamber, but I'm going to show you really quickly how this works. So essentially what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my go round in here. I'm going to mark the chamber I'm working on just so I know where I am. I'm going to make sure chambers. Okay, and then I'm going to cock it back and see if I can get it, would it be fired. And as you can see, it's going to make it all the way through. And that's exactly what we want. Our no-go gauge should not be able to chamber. And this is for the same with every single round. As you, as you can see, it doesn't chamber. And we want that for every single chamber as well. So just to show you what I mean, it doesn't chamber in this one either. Okay, and that's exactly what we want. We do not want our no-go headspace to chamber. And that is how you do the headspace on the Taurus A56. All right, guys, it's gonna conclude this video where we did some trigger pull weights. We used layout fluid. We did some sanding and polishing. We did a spring replacement. We did the headspace as well. Now for our references. We used the Gun Digest Book of Revolvers, Assembly and Disassembly, fourth edition. Of course, we used our FTH-202 Mechanics and Firearms Revolvers course. We also used the Gun Digest Exploded Handgun Drawings, 7th edition. We used our Taurus 856 manual, and we also used our Gunsmithing Pistols and Revolvers, 4th edition. If you have any questions, let me know, and stay frosty, guys.